All right, this is Dr. Mark Barkey. In this video, we're going to continue on with our discussion of exploring the ODB file in Abacus with Python. We had a part one to this where we read data and wrote it out to an Excel spreadsheet uh, from an ODB file. And I've got an ODB file here, and this is the one that we're going to take a look at. So it's a short pipe. It's a thermal analysis. What we're looking at here is the NT11 temperatures. Let's see if I can make this I'll scale legend a little bit bigger. So we can see what these temperatures are. Okay. And I just want to give a little plug to my own website here at the beginning of this video. If you go to embarky.com and you go to mechanics forums, uh, I will have this script here in scripting in Python. Okay. All right, so a little bit of the basic setup. Let me show you what files I've got in here to work with. I've got my input file that I used to create the ODB file. Uh, the other files are in a different folder. SPT-1 is my original ODB file, and I made two copies of it, uh, B and C. One is just my original, and B and C are a couple of copies. We're going to read out of B, and we're going to write into C. I have a couple of uh, batch files here that help me uh, copy the, kind of reset the ODB files. So it just copies SPT1 to SPT1B, and the slash Y is no prompt. And likewise, from uh, 1 to C, just kind of resets everything. Uh, as I'm testing things out. And then in here I have my node list. Okay, this is a single column text file. It contains all the nodes in my piece of pipe. And uh, my temperature values that I have in this text file. It's a single column text file with temperatures. And I have kind of an unusual temperature distribution. I'm just making some things up. Minus 100 degrees, and then partway through this file, it starts changing and starts ramping up different temperatures, and it goes to 1625. Now, the numbers really here aren't important, but what I want to emphasize is how to get these numbers into our ODB file. So they're both text files. They're both single column. And it's important to note that they correspond uh, by line. So up at the top, node number 41312 corresponds to a temperature of minus 100. Node 41313 corresponds to this other line right here, whatever it is, of minus 100. If we go all the way down to the bottom where they start changing, node 173720 should correspond to this temperature of 1625. And we'll check that out as we run our script. We do need to have our setup available to us to run our script. I have a command prompt window. And as I mentioned before, some of my paths got messed up. So I needed to add this manually. So I run this batch file manually to make sure that uh, C simulator abacus commands is available in my path. And then finally, my temperature writing scripts. Let's go over the script just a little bit, and then we'll execute it. Some of this should look kind of familiar from before. Here are some places where I found some tips. We're going to import ODB access and some other things in here. Some of these may not be needed, but I haven't gone through and, and discovered which ones are not needed for this particular script. But you may need these for other ones. So here's my ODB file that I'm going to read from, SPT1B. Okay. And then I'm going to write this one, SPT1C. Now, right now, they are all the same. All three ODB files are the same, SPT1, 1B, and 1C. 1, I just want to have open so we can look at it. B is the one we're going to read a frame out of. And C, we're going to read a frame from B and put it into C. And then we're also going to read data from the disk 
those two text files and put it into C. A couple of important things that you need to note about uh, all this process. Data cannot be overwritten in an ODB. It's just not allowed. So what you have to do is you have to make a new step or and or a new frame to contain the data. Then we're going to look at two methods. We're going to write an entire frame of data from one ODB to another. You may want to do this if, say, you have a, a huge set of analyses and you have separate ODB files. Maybe this is a way to collect all the ODB information that you need, say only the temperature data into one ODB file, so that you can take that and do a uh, an animation just by using that file. Maybe you want a more compact ODB file or something. There may be other reasons, but maybe that's an example. And then the other method, like I said, we're going to read data from a text file and write it to a frame. The reason why I want to do this is I want to take temperatures from computational fluid dynamics model for my piece of pipe and I want to put that into a temperature frame in an ODB file which I'm going to use in a subsequent uncoupled thermal stress analysis. Um, we'll get into that part later but what we're going to do then is uh, just see what the script does and we're going to execute it. So here we go. We're going to define the step and the frame to read from our existing ODB. We're going to read step 2, frame 4. If I go to my file here and I look at my step 2, frame 4, okay, that's this set of data. Okay, so we're going to read all of this and then we're going to reproduce it and put it in to SPT1C. Now this is just a temporary uh, file variable. We're going to read the only the NT11 data. There's heat flux data and all that kind of stuff in there. We only want the NT11. And uh, here it is. The new data set is going to be this selected results data set. Here's the step name. We're going to call it test step 3. We're going to make a new step. It's a user defined. We can put in the time period. And then we're going to put it in frame 0. Okay. The new results frame is going to be NT11 with the user-defined data type scalar. In the new results field, we're going to add data, field, new data set. Okay, so remember, new data set was just what we read out of step 2, frame 4. Okay. All right, so that's that part of it. We're going to save the data. And then this other part, we need to read in our nodes. And so that's what this does uh, with open node list.txt is f nodes equal f read dot split lines and then I'm going to turn it into a tuple now, I'm no Python expert uh, I don't know anything about Python but I do know that uh, a tuple is the format that we need for this and we also need to make sure that the um, uh, I have to understand that a tuple is what's called immutable once things are in a tuple we can't change it so in map uh, integer nodes. So what this does is make sure that it takes these numbers and uh, make sure that they are actually integers and not something else as the nodes should be. Right. Now the second line reads the values, all those temperatures in that values file. And the, the thing that took me a while to figure out is that the data that goes into the command to insert it into the ODB file has to be what's called a sequence of sequences and that's what this command will do it's going to take and read from this file and it's going to make a bunch of tuples until the end of the file and uh, here I called it my list but then I just renamed it to V you can print this out if you want so what I mean by a list of tuples is here's an example Here's six nodes. Okay, that's the node list. That seems very understandable. You would think that that's how it would be, and it is. But here is the temperature data. Notice how there's a parentheses surrounding the whole thing, and then each value has the value for the temperature, comma, and then the parentheses. Okay, so this is a tuple, and they, you can—it's known to be a tuple because it's got the comma 
It's a one element couple. So it's a sequence of tuples. So tuple one, comma, tuple two, comma, tuple three, comma, and so on. Uh, I had a huge problem figuring this out and uh, it cannot be let's see I don't have it in here but it cannot be let me write it on my my page you know initially I thought it would be okay I have temperature one temperature two temperature three and so on but that won't work the way that you have to do it is temperature one comma in parentheses separated by a comma temperature two comma in parentheses separated by another comma temperature three comma and so forth. Now again if you're a Python expert maybe this is pretty intuitive to you but uh, not at all to me and, and it took a while for me to, to find that out and uh, through the help of some of those uh, tips that I have in the, the script. Alright so let's, uh, let's go back to that. Okay so now I'm gonna write it to the same test step 3. If I want to put it in an, a different step then I can uncomment this line and put the new step right here. Okay, uh, So now I'm going to call this increment 1. I cannot overwrite increment 0. It's not allowed. It's not possible. So I'm going to make uh, an increment number 1 and I'm going to put uh, the field output in T11 description user defined type scalar and here's the important thing new results field dot add data position equal nodal instance equal instance one I've defined that uh, up above we'll take a look at that in a second labels equal n so these are the node labels that's this value right here okay uh, n right here and data is equal to v that's this uh, right here. Let's look at instance one. Instance one is the ODB write root assembly instance part 1-1-1. Uh, you may need to change this if you have a different uh, instance. You can usually be able to find this in your input file or there are ways that you can uh, take a look so you can print the ODB root assembly instance keys uh, if you want to see what's in the write file, you would put ODB write. But since my my reading and my writing file are exactly the same, uh, it has the same keys in it. Okay. All right. So we have everything in here. Uh, we need to make sure we save the data. Then we're going to close everything out. Uh, probably don't need ODB save or ODB close, but uh, or at least ODB save because I'm not saving that that SPT1B ODB. Alright, let's find our command window. To execute this, we're going to go abacus python Let's see if I can spell it right, temperature writer dash o one dot py and let's see what it does okay so I printed out a couple things and uh, basically it's done so now I'm going to go back to abacus and I'm going to open up c odb that's what I wrote to I'm going to explore it a little bit. Let's look at the steps. Okay, there's my test step 3 and it should have a frame 0 and a frame 1. Okay, frame 0 should be exactly the same as step 2 frame 4. Now 
right? And it is. Okay, so we were able to successfully copy a frame out of the one ODB and put it into here. Right? And then uh, this next frame, it's going to look a little funny. We saw it for just a second. Is the data that I just wrote uh, using the the files on my disk. Now, if you notice, uh, about half the file was at minus 100, and then I had all these different temperatures in here. So that's why it looks uh, very weird. Uh, it's not physically meaningful, but I got the data in the right spot. Just to check, let's do this. Let's go and uh, query. I'm going to probe values. We're going to look at uh, nodes. And we're going to look at node labels. And let's uh, let's see which node label is down at the bottom of our file. Maybe close to it. Scrolling all the way down to the bottom. Uh, this one right here. 173719. Just going to copy that file. And I'm going to paste it in here. So that's the second one from the bottom. And it says the temperature is 1624. Okay, that's this value right here. And let's check. Let's look at our values file. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. And that uh, was a second from the bottom, 1624. Alright, so that node did get that temperature assigned to it. Now, if you look through the Abacus manual, you can find out how to write element. Uh, integration, stresses, tensor values, displacements, vector values, and uh, different things. But again, the real key point is to whatever data that you have has to be in this format right here where you have these uh, tuples. Now if you have displacement data, it's going to be a three element tuple right here. Displacement in the x, y, and z direction for node whatever. Displacement in the x, y, and z so it's going to be like X1, Y1, Z1 in parentheses. Uh, but uh, for single scalar data, it still needs to be a tuple. Uh, just to emphasize that again, temperature 1, comma, then in parentheses. And then all these things separated by commas. All right. I hope you found that helpful. And uh, we'll see what I can come up with next.